Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. And welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm your host, Chris Shea, and this is the podcast where we talk about practical tips for daily living, uh, living through mindfulness, and living in a way that we can find our inner peace. So I'm very glad that you tuned in to this episode. Uh, This is an episode, uh, at least the topic is something that I've been reflecting on. Uh, predominantly since the uh, end of the raucous elections uh, in the United States. Um, This is not a political post. The uh, topic is about being angry at the world and what we can do with that anger. It really seems to me that as we look around, people are on edge, people are nervous, frightened. It seems that if you say something and it's interpreted differently, then people are angry at you. Studies have shown how uh, people are losing friends from social media. So this really is a time that I think we need to begin to look more within ourselves and try to figure out why is there so much anger and what can I do about it? For this podcast, I'd like to focus a bit more on the second question, on the what can I do about it. I have found that the why question in life isn't uh, usually the important question uh, because we don't always know the why. For me, what I've uh, discovered is the why is not as important as the what. You know, what can I do about a certain situation? So that's uh, the topic for reflection. And if anyone has any comments or any ways that you have tried to continue to find an inner peace throughout this period of anger, this period of stress. Let us know. You can uh, find me on social media. Uh, You can go over to my website, lifesjourneyblog.com, and uh, check us out there. And, you know, that'll show you where all of our social media sites are. Uh, Or leave a comment on whatever podcast you're uh, listening to at the moment. When I was uh, taking a look at this topic, I discovered that a little over a year ago, there was a study uh, that was conducted by a group of researchers uh, led by Akuda, and they discovered that almost 8% of the Americans that they surveyed, 8% of Americans that they surveyed, And they surveyed 34,000 adults. They looked at adults being those who are aged 18 and up. So out of 34,000 adults in the United States, they found that 8% had an overall prevalence of inappropriate, intense, or poorly controlled anger. Now, that percentage may not seem high, but if we round out the numbers, for every 34,000 adult Americans, approximately 3,000 of them are exhibiting poorly controlled anger. Of every 34,000 people, 3,000 of them are exhibiting poorly controlled anger. That seems like a lot. Yes, 8% is an overly high, 
but 8% is close to the 10%, and, you know, when you start rounding out 10%, yeah, there seems to be, uh, you know, at least from this study, a pretty high uh, predominance and prevalence for anger. We're seeing a lot of this anger demonstrated uh, in the streets, through the protests, on social media. But I do want to focus a bit more on a perspective coming from mindfulness. Because in mindfulness, we are urged to remain in the moment, non-judgmentally. Now, what does that mean again? Well, non-judgmentally means you live in the present moment without saying to yourself whether this is good or bad. You experience what is happening in the present moment, and you use that experience to move you into the next present moment. For those who are interested in a more in-depth uh, look at mindfulness, check out my website. Uh, I've written uh, numerous articles on mindfulness and uh, search through the podcasts. Uh, there are a couple of the podcasts where I've talked specifically on what uh, mindfulness and, and non-judgmentally is all about. But if we focus on mindfulness as being living in the moment as it is, that's where I want to look at and study this anger. So what would be helpful is assuming that the anger is taking a person away from their peace. It's to guide that person to shift their perspective so that we can take action in the hopes of returning to a sense of peace. As a counselor and a practitioner of mindfulness, I don't perceive the feeling of anger as being either positive or negative. The feeling of anger is a feeling. It's what I do with the feeling is what makes it either positive or negative. So for anger... That feeling in and of itself is not the issue. It doesn't matter if you are angry. But my perception and my actions based on that anger, that's the issue. So the fact that many people these days seem to be angry is not what's bothering me. What many people who are angry what they are doing is the issue. How they are coping with their feelings. If those coping feelings lead you away from happiness, then there would be an unhealthy component. Our goal is how do we reach happiness? In today's society, it seems that whenever we feel that our ideas, our beliefs, or our opinions are attacked, our basic instinct kicks in, resulting in an anger response. Anger is the most judgmental, in my opinion, of our emotions. Anger is also the most moralistic, self-righteous, and repudiating of our emotions. Most of us, in my opinion, will defend what we believe. Attacking a person's beliefs or opinions is very similar to attacking the person themselves. Why? Well, I figure it's because we are the thinker of our thoughts, so therefore, if you attack my thoughts then you are attacking what I created, those thoughts. And in attacking those thoughts and what I created, then you're really essentially attacking me because I'm that creator. Anger is also probably the only emotion which we consciously cling to. So if we think about like the last time we felt the happiest, 
or pick any other emotion. How long did that feeling in its intensity last? And when that feeling began to drift away, many of us would say, I wish it lasted longer. Yet when it comes to anger, when was the last time that feeling simply drifted away? For many of us, we hold on to anger. We ruminate over and over the offense which was done to us. So between the emotions of, say, happiness and anger, which would you choose to ruminate on? I'm assuming most of us, given the choice, would want to ruminate on the happiness. But odds are many of us in reality end up choosing the anger. Why do we hold on to this anger? Well, one of the things as a counselor I would want to ask if you're holding on to anger or any emotion too deeply or let's say part of a, you know, an addiction process, what is the holding on to that feeling doing for you? What does that holding on to that feeling give you? We don't hold on to anger or an addiction if there isn't something in it for us. So let's take a, a quick moment and, and kind of examine what does the emotion of anger do for us? Well, it provides us with a feeling of power. If I'm angry, I can feel more powerful, more um, self-righteous, more self-assured. Anger can enable me to believe that I'm in control of a situation. Assuming that the anger doesn't get out of hand, and I've worked with people who, you know, with, with anger issues, uh, the anger can get out of hand and, and they can't control that. But besides that, when we look at the prevalent anger within society, I believe that what some of that anger is doing for most in society is, is giving them a sense that they are in control of that situation. And I think the third thing that anger can give us is that it confirms for us that we are right and correct in whichever stance we have taken. We can tell ourselves that if I am responding with such intensity of emotion, then obviously I must be correct. And I will defend that correctness. So really, when we look at these three main things, and I'm sure there's more, why wouldn't I want to hold on anger? You know, why wouldn't I want to feel this sense of power and uh, self-righteousness and, you know, the, the sense that I can do something about the situation? So in that sense, when we look at society holding on to the anger, it's somewhat makes sense that this is why we would you know want to hold on to that because if i give up on that feeling of anger then i allow myself to feel less powerful less in control and i might even discover that you know i might be not 100 percent correct in the ideas that i have See, if I'm willing to give over power and control, then I begin to re-examine my own thoughts. And in examining my own thoughts, I open myself up to self-examination. Now, self-examination is one of the goals of meditation. Self-examination is also a means of growth. But self-examination can also be scary because we might uncover aspects about us that we don't like and that we don't want to open. So as we hold on to this anger, 
we're not allowing ourselves this ability of examination. So in a lot of cases, that which angers us and others is exactly what we are covering up in ourselves. As I see it, there is what I'm going to call a healthy anger versus an unhealthy anger. A healthy anger is this feeling of angry by choice. Now, as a sidebar, I will say that all emotions ultimately are chosen. But for the sake of analogy, let me just loosely speak of this. So, for example, if you witness an injustice and you become angry since your belief system speaks to justice then your motivation for feeling that anger is not a self-righteous indignation or a sense to overpower someone. Rather, anger in this situation, this example, most likely will result in action toward resolving the injustice. In resolving the injustice, we gain a sense of peace. As peace begins to overtake the anger, one is more willing to open themselves up to self-examination. In comparison, unhealthy anger is that anger which we hold on to in a self-righteous manner with no motivation or intention toward a sense of peace or self-examination. The unhealthy anger is that anger which I'm going to hold in for those reasons that we stated earlier. Where the healthy anger is that anger that I'm going to feel which is going to motivate me to make a change so that I don't hold on to that anger. But in the change that I can make, I can find some peace within myself and hopefully everyone else who's involved in that situation. So we come to the person who practices mindfulness and meditation and self-examination, recognizes within them a sense of peace and peacefulness. If you notice, I'm not saying that a person who works on mindfulness feels peace. No, I'm using the word that they have a sense of peace. Why? Well... Feelings such as anger and happiness are fleeting. They come and go. But having a sense of peace within us is not fleeting. A sense of inner peace speaks to an awareness of the person and their environment. If you think about it, we can feel angry and happy and sad, while at the same time maintaining a sense of peace. If we look to people such as Gandhi or Martin Luther King Jr., I would guess that they felt anger. But anger was not their only sense of motivation. Anger is what motivated them to act. So, when they looked at anger as a motivation for acting, their reasons for acting were not violent. Their rhetoric, what they said, was of love. They seemed to have a sense of inner peace about them. Yet, I'm sure they had the sense of anger at the injustice that was being done. But that sense of inner peace did not allow the anger to betray their own beliefs, which guided their actions. For you see, when we feel emotions and then act in unison with our core beliefs, we don't violate who we are. And in not violating who we are, then we're in unison. We're one. We're at peace. We may feel anger or sadness at certain situations or even towards specific people, 
But in maintaining a union between those feelings and our actions with our core beliefs, then we can retain our sense of inner peace even as we struggle through the turmoil of our feelings. So we really can feel these fleeting emotions regardless of what they are while maintaining a sense of inner peace if we don't allow those emotions to invade or change our core beliefs, to change who we are in our core. So for me, our challenge is not to stop feeling angry. That's not the challenge. Don't take away from this podcast, well, I need to stop being angry. No, not necessarily. Our challenge, rather, is to learn how best to respond to anger. So it's not the anger itself which is the issue or the sense that you're feeling the anger. What you need to learn is how do I respond to that anger. Here's four steps that I would like to toss out for consideration to help you in learning how we can use anger, how we can respond to anger to bring some inner peace. Number one, before we even feel angry, Begin a daily practice of mindful meditation and self-examination. Make that a part of your day. Spend maybe 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening, in self-reflection and mindful meditation. Number two, when you do feel angry, find that inner peace so that you can change your perspective to better understand the situation from everyone's viewpoint before reacting or responding spend a moment to reflect how are other people seeing the situation how are others involved in this looking at it number three Take action. Do something, but make sure that the action that you take is in union with your core beliefs. So taking that action that actually fits what you truly believe. Again, the examples of Gandhi or Martin Luther King Jr. Because then you are going to be in union with yourself, even with the actions that you're taking, And that's going to bring some peace, as we talked about. And number four, when the situation is over, refuse the urge to hold on to your anger. And this is one of the more difficult things to do. When it's over, let it go. Don't hold on to this anger. When the situation is over, let your inner peace Overtake the anger and allow yourself some quiet time to recharge, to regroup. So as we review all the stuff that we've talked about, I do agree that the, you know there is much in our world that we can feel angry about. There's many places and people who don't seem to have a sense of peace right now. But I think if we can use those four steps above and begin to mindfully look at anger, mindfully review my actions and response toward my anger, then we can really help to bring in an inner peace. As I mentioned earlier, if you have comments Uh, to this podcast and to add to these four steps, uh, please leave a comment on, you know, either the podcast that you're listening to or on my social media uh, or on my website, which again is lifesjourneyblog.com. Also, 
Uh, we are introducing a newsletter. Uh, this is going to be a bi-monthly newsletter coming out every other week, uh, starting in March. And we are uh, actively opening up the sign-up list. So if you would like to receive two newsletters a month, we're not going to clog your inbox, but two newsletters that will have practical tips on living life, tips on mindfulness and med- uh, meditation, uh, we'll put in some events as to where I will be speaking, um, some of the things that's uh, happening, um, you know, with life's journey, life coaching, and uh, just the whole world of mindfulness. Please sign up. And how can you sign up? Well, go over to my website. Again, that's lifesjourneyblog.com. And on the front page of that website, you will uh, see an area where it says to sign up. Please know I am not selling your emails to anybody. Your emails stay with me. Uh, I don't like it when it happens to me. I'm not going to do it to you. Uh, But uh, please sign up and tell your friends about it. And uh, the beginning of March, you will get your first newsletter on the practical tips for everyday living in a mindful way. Thank you for listening and uh, have a mindful day. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.